Hi, this is Dr. Park from Carolina Conceptions, and this is a video demonstrating the egg retrieval procedure that's part of the IVF process. We perform the egg retrievals in a procedure room that's adjacent to the IVF lab, which you can see here on the other side of the window. The patient is currently under anesthesia, and we have an anesthetist that administers IV sedation for this. I'm positioned between the patient's legs, performing a vaginal ultrasound. Attached to the ultrasound probe, there is a needle guide that allows me to safely direct the needle through the vaginal wall and into the ovary. Once the needle's in the ovary, I can move it between the individual follicles. There's a foot-activated suction device that will pull the fluid out of the individual follicles and that fluid ends up getting collected in the test tubes that you can see here. The eggs are contained within the follicular fluid, so this fluid will be examined for the presence of the eggs. Once I drain all of the follicles from one ovary, the needle is then passed through the other side of the vagina into the opposite ovary, and all of the follicles from this ovary will be drained as well. The procedure only takes somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes to complete, and by the time the patient is waking up from anesthesia, we usually have a complete count for the total number of eggs that we've retrieved. Here is a view from within the IVF laboratory on the other side of the window. While the egg retrieval is being performed, the test tubes that are full of follicular fluid are passed to the embryologist through this space. The test tubes are placed temporarily into a warming block to prevent the temperature from dropping. The embryologist will then take the individual test tubes and pour the fluid into a sterile dish. The fluid in this dish will then be examined under a microscope and the individual eggs will be collected and saved for fertilization later on in the day. Hi, this is Dr. Meyer and we're here here in the embryo transfer room and what I'm showing the patient is a, a photograph or an ultrasound of her uterus that you can see below the black structure which is her bladder. We do this in all patients prior to transferring the embryos back inside their uterus. The patients come in with a full bladder. They're a little uncomfortable but the full bladder allows us to see with an ultrasound down into her pelvis and see her uterine cavity. We try to do this under a low level setting with only the light shining on her cervix. This room that we do the embryo transfer in is actually an extension of the laboratory which you can see on the left side of the screen. That's a door leading right into the laboratory. This will facilitate the transfer of the embryos right from the laboratory in the same type of humidified and temperature controlled environment. Once the patient is here with her husband or her significant other, we place a speculum inside the vaginal vault and I'm speaking to the patient about what I'm doing with her. I'm looking at her cervix at this time and what we will do is we will actually clean off the opening to the uterus or her cervix with a media that we actually uh, culture the embryos in. This, in this way, we get rid of any, any mucus and any bacteria. The solution has been placed in her vagina at the top of the um, vagina and you'll see that as I push just, just to uh, mop up any excess fluid you can actually see her uterus move. This also helps us confirm the location of the uterus. Next I take out the uh, transfer catheter. Um, this is part of actually a mock transfer because we're going to use the catheter once we place it in to guide the real transfer. You'll see on the ultrasound screen that the catheter comes in as a white appearing uh, line from the left side. You see the nurse pointing from, Michelle is pointing from the left side up into the uh, uterine cavity. You can see the circuitous route that the catheter actually takes and that's why we think ultrasound can be very important in guiding the placement of the embryos. Here are the two embryos. That was just a quick view of the two embryos that are going to be placed in her uterus. Michelle has told us that she's loaded the catheter. She's bringing the inner catheter and that's going to re replace the inner catheter that I've removed. We're going to again watch 
Now the real thing, the real catheter, come from the left side through a cervix, lower uterus, and into the endometrial cavity. Once it's there, a slight push pushes the embryos from the very end of the catheter into the uterine cavity. Once that has occurred, the catheter is slowly withdrawn and given to Michelle or the other embryologists who now take the catheter into the lab and confirm that the catheter is clear.